legislation that would help correct uh, the records of gay veterans uh, discharged for no other reason than their sexual orientation. Uh, we were cautiously optimistic that we could receive the support of a good number of our colleagues. Uh, but I think I speak for both Congressman Rangel uh, and myself when I say uh, that we didn't anticipate, at least in the beginning, uh, the strong uh, type of support that we received from uh, members uh, all across the country. Uh, today, we're proud to officially introduce the bipartisan uh, Restore Honor to Service Members Act with 102 original co-sponsors. This bill instills the full repeal of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell uh, into law and finally closes the dark chapter of our history on this bill. Uh, this legislation is about providing 114,000 gay veterans who selfishly uh, risk their, selflessly risk their lives for our nation uh, with the recognition, benefits, and honor that they deserve. Uh, while the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell uh, was a landmark step towards equality in our military, uh, tens of thousands of gays and, and lesbian veterans uh, still have records uh, marred with a range of discharges and designations. And there are real practical consequences to these discharge classifications and designations. Uh, in many states, a dishonorable discharge is treated as a felony. Uh, service members receive a general discharge, a lesser offense, can encounter grave difficulties acquiring civilian employment. And depending on the discharge received, service members may be blocked from voting, unemployment benefits, participating in the GI Bill, or receiving veterans benefits, uh, such as health care, VA disability, and ceremonial burial rights at military cemeteries. Our legislation ensures that our courageous gay and lesbian veterans no longer live with tarnished records. Uh, here's the situation. Today, the process for a veteran to have their record reviewed is oftentimes confusing and varied, discouraging many deserving veterans from pursuing a rightful upgrade of their record. Our legislation will create a timely, consistent, and transparent review process so that gay veterans who served honorably have their records rightfully upgraded to honorable. Our bill will also allow veterans to remove any indication of their sexual orientation from the record so they are not automatically outed to those accessing their record or made to feel as if their sexual orientation makes them any less able to serve. While we never can give these brave veterans back the time or service they were denied to provide this country, we can take steps to help restore the honor that they deserve. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, and um, I, I, I can't thank you enough for sharing your views and bringing some equity uh, to the men and women who served our great country uh, so well. Uh, the whole idea uh, that just because of their sexual orientation uh, that they would be given dishonorable discharges, bad discharges, blue discharges, uh, less than desirable discharges. Uh, it's really uh, inconsistent with everything that good Americans think that is fair and they think that is equitable. I, for one, am a recipient of medical care, educational benefits as a result of my service in the military. And it is awkward and embarrassing uh, for me to think about the tens of thousands of people that have served their country well, and just because of their sexual orientation, they have been denied the honor that they truly deserve. And so we now have to make certain that we get the majority of the House uh, involved in this. I am confident that the only reason that we haven't done this, Mark, is because people have not been as thoughtful as you have and I am also confident that my House members and Senate colleagues are going to be very, very anxious to correct uh, the wrongdoing that uh, we've had uh, conducted in the past. And while this doesn't remove the scars and the pain 
uh, of what has been done, it goes a long way uh, to, to clear the record and to make it clear that we made mistakes and we hope that we don't make the same mistakes again. So we're very anxious now to uh, take questions and uh, it's wide open. Thanks again, Mark. Hello. Congressman Ringel, first, uh, we don't have questions yet. We do have, uh, if we can, uh, two veterans. Oh, yes. Go right ahead. Hopelessly, yeah. We just make sure we bring these two in. Uh, they selfishly served our country, uh, selflessly served our country uh, in the armed forces, uh, but they were forced to leave a uh, service they loved merely because of their sexual orientation. First, I'd like to uh, introduce Danny Ingram, who's the national president of American Veterans for Equal Rights. Danny served in the U.S. Army, but became one of the first soldiers to be discharged from the U.S. military under the then uh, new Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. Sixteen years later, uh, Danny was invited by the Obama White House to attend the presidential signing ceremony that repealed the Don't Ask, Don't Tell law. Uh, Danny, thank you so much for joining us today and for continuing to work on behalf of LGBT veterans. Um, thank you, Congressman. Thank you very much for um, inviting me to participate today. Um, I am the national president of American Veterans with Equal Rights, which is an LGBT veteran service organization, um, and it's the only LGBT VSO recognized by the Veterans Administration. We were founded um, almost 25 years ago by Mr. Chuck Schoen, who uh, served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, worked his way up from enlisted to officer, and just a few months short of his 20 years of service and full retirement, he was dishonorably discharged from the United States Navy um, for his sexual orientation. Um, some years later, he did. Uh, he was able to get his discharge upgraded. It was a a ten year process, um, and, and he still does not have his benefits. And certainly, he will never have his full retirement. But um, many of the discharges before Don't Ask, Don't Tell were less than honorable. And many of those veterans uh, from World War II to Korea and even Vietnam are now very much in need for benefits from the, their medical benefits from the VA. And um, they uh, need to be able to get those discharges upgraded uh, very quickly. And it is, as you explained, it's a very, very cumbersome, lengthy, and expensive process to get that done now. And these veterans need those benefits from the VA. They need to be able to get them um, upgraded in a, a, in a very timely manner so that they can access their, their health care from the VA. Um, in addition to the, uh, the, the upgrade itself, there's something called a narrative code, uh, which appears on um, DD-214s, which are discharge paperwork, um, and they include something called a bar to reenlistment, which is something I have on my discharge, um, which is basically the same thing as saying not fit for military service. Um, many of the the um, service members who were discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, even if they received an honorable discharge, um, they did have these um, R4 codes, negative reentry codes, uh, that frequently will say uh, homosexual or homosexual conduct right on the, the, the paperwork. Um, as, as everyone knows, um, our veterans who are returning now from overseas are having a difficult time finding employment, and certainly with, with this kind of um, um, wording or narrative on their discharge um, forms, they're having a, a difficult job, a uh, difficult time finding jobs um, in the civilian workforce. So we certainly hope that this legislation will help out these veterans to uh, 
clean their records, show their honorable service, allow them to access the GI Bill and VA health care. Uh, this is one of my organization's number one priorities, and we certainly appreciate and very much support this legislation. Thank, thank you, Danny, uh, and again, thank you for your service. Uh, finally, I'm very pleased to introduce a former U.S. Air Force Staff Sergeant, David Hall. Uh, David joined the Air Force on March 6, 1996, following in the footsteps of his father and stepfather, who each retired from the Air Force. Uh, however, in 2002, after his acceptance into the Air Force ROTC, he was outed to his commander and discharged under the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. This past January, he was named one of eight citizen co-chairs of President Obama's second inauguration. Uh, David, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Congressman, and, and you know, and thank you for the, the opportunity uh, to, to speak out or to, you know, to speak about this bill and why it's important. And um, as you said, you know, I, I joined the Air Force uh, following the success of, of my dad and stepdad, who both served uh, 20 years, um, and and my brother has you know just retired from the Navy uh, from um, from serving 20 years, and so now he's you know getting back, getting used to. Um, Figuring out how he gets into the civilian life and you know and, and goes into the civilian job and you know and how all his benefits um, you know fits into that and and I think that's important to show um, why this bill is that important. Um, um, you know, as I was discharged under Don't Have to Tell, I mean, I was lucky I had an honorable discharge uh, because I went from ROTC um, to uh, you know I went from active duty to go into ROTC. I had a different code. Um, so, you know, when I was discharged under ROTC, I just received a piece of paper saying, you know, you're being kicked out of the military due to homosexual conduct and you're no longer, you know, able to serve in the military. And after uh, Don't Ask Until was repealed, I did try to go back in um, to the reserve. And, you know, it's just having to explain to everyone and go through the paperwork and show them, um, you know, why were you kicked out? Why are you going back in? And, you know, even during the physical, and they're like, well, what was your discharge? It seems like everywhere you had to put, why were you discharged? Why were you discharged? Um, and having to explain, well, I was discharged in homosexual conduct. Um, and, you know, so this is an important thing that a lot still comes up and will continue to come up um, for all of the people that were discharged, not only under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, but prior to Don't Ask, Don't Tell, um, where Danny has said most do have an other than honorable um, and, and the long, drawn-out process of, you know, many friends that I've known that didn't have an honorable discharge and what they've had to do um, and basically work with a lawyer and prove to the military that, you know, they weren't only discharged um, for being gay. There was no other reason. Um, but they shouldn't have to prove that. And, and, and I'm hoping your bill will, you know, will make this a much easier process, allow people um, to get the benefits that they deserve, but also just to get that dignity back they felt that was taken from them you know, when they were kicked out of the military. And I think, you know, as, um, our country, we deserve, to, these people deserve to be treated um, the way they should have. And, um, and this bill goes um, to correct that without. Well, thank you, David. Um, I think now I'd like to open it up. Uh, David, Danny, Congressman Rangel, and myself uh, are available. If you can press star six to unmute your phone, uh, we can take any questions you might have. If you wouldn't mind to say your name and organization before the question, that'd be helpful as well. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Kevin Fracking, but the AP. I, I was hoping to ask what, what's entailed in the upgrade process that makes it uh, so uh, cumbersome and lengthy and expensive. Is, is it just a, a lack of manpower to deal with the applications? And, and what percentage of upgrades are successful? Any ideas? We don't have uh, the procedure to really upgrade uh, what has been done. We are establishing that now, and a board will be an appropriate board would be set up to review the discharge. But as we are now, even the don't ask, don't tell uh, procedures have not been codified, and so because of the uh, problems that the veterans have had until. Uh, Mark and I have come up with this. That there has been no legislative solution. 
Yeah, and also uh, each branch is a different policy, uh, and also um, it, it, people don't know what materials to bring. So what's happened, what we've heard, is people will uh, apply to get a change, and then a couple months later be told they need to submit something else, and then a couple months later be told they need to submit something else, and they have to hire an attorney, and it gets expensive. And we're just trying to make it a, a clear-cut process so people uh, can do this. Right now what we're hearing is discouraging um, people from going through the process because uh, of what they have to go through and how different it is. Once people in the military see the groundswell of support uh, that the Congress has to try to right a wrong that has commit, been committed, I'm certain that they will find ways to facilitate uh, the damage that's been done to the reputation of our dedicated men and women who served the nation so well. Can you speak to uh, Republican support for the bill? Well, I don't think when someone's in combat or supporting their country that they ask whether they're Democrat or Republicans. And so I think we'll wave the flag a little bit and play the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, but we do have uh, 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 Lena, uh, uh, who is uh, a Republican, and she's uh, uh, leading the way on this uh, for us. But I really don't see any partisanship as it relates to this. Uh, when it comes to the military, uh, I think that's one of the few areas that that barrier is broken down. Thank you. That's, uh, that's uh, Lena Ross uh, Latian. She's a Republican, senior Republican from Florida. Yeah, Ileana Ross Layton. I know there's been some other folks that we've been also talking to, but I know she's signed on so far. We just wanted to turn it in once we hit um, over 100. Other questions? Hi, uh, Jack Kramer from the Capitol Times. Uh, Congressman Pocan, have you talked to the Wisconsin delegation about this at all? Uh, what about Republicans in the Wisconsin delegation? Uh, right now, we uh, just put it out to get co-sponsors. We haven't taken it um, to the next step as far as reaching out to like every single member. We did through the normal process how you get sponsors. We're also working right now with the Senate to see what we can do specifically as the Senate's reviewing some things that can still be timely. Um, but. The, of the, I think we have a list of sponsors that if we haven't put out, I know we can put out, and I'll give you the full list of who is on um, from Wisconsin. Thanks. Quite frankly, this is Charles Rangel. We're expecting that uh, you might help us in getting the words out that there, there will be a legal remedy to a problem that the nation uh, should be uh, regretful about. And the more you get the word out, the more members, uh, they, the more they will get in touch with their members. And we, I do really expect that we'll have the overwhelming majority of the members in the House and the Senate will follow suit. But people have to know and they have to care. And indifference has been the enemy of this not being resolved a long time ago. And Jack, specifically to your question, Ron Kind, uh, Gwen Moore... Uh, myself are on. I know we've been talking to Reed Ribble's office um, specifically about it. Thank you. Hey, what? Mark. Uh, this is Jeff Lidson with the, uh, the State Journal. Um, I just wanted to, to get an idea. Do um, you know how many people this will impact in Wisconsin? Yeah, we don't have state-by-state -state numbers. We do know that between uh, World War II and the end of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, it's about 114,000 people. So um, while I don't have state-specific numbers, uh, we do know that there are literally tens of thousands of people right now who um, could benefit from this. Okay, and Mark, I think this is your uh, uh, first uh, major piece of legislation since you were elected. Is why, why this one first? Well, we've actually done uh, one other uh, a constitutional right to vote amendment uh, oh. that was also, yeah, very important. But, uh, you know, I think this is one of these issues, obviously, being someone who's um, openly gay, uh, when you look at, you know, what it means to have now service at the federal level, I mean, one of those things I've never had to deal with before at the state level was uh, obviously the military and Department of Defense. And, you know, this is an area where I think, you know, everyone respects uh, the men and women who serve our country, and yet this is a, such an obvious uh, oversight that we're not taking care of some of these people. Uh, it just kind of combined a little bit of who I am and my past values uh, with the job I now have 
And uh, we were glad to know that uh, Congressman Rangel uh, has been a long advocate for equality and uh, was working on something as well. And we were able to team up and, and work with him to lead this bill. It, um, and uh, what committees does this have to go through? Probably the Armed Forces, Veterans, and uh, yeah. uh, most importantly, before it really reaches the committee, we will be bringing together a group of uh, people who support veterans on other legislation, but uh, uh, the Veterans Committee certainly will be going through it, and we uh, are hoping that we can get this involved in the Department of Defense. We hope too. Uh, we haven't talked about it, Mark, but uh, there's no question we are looking to get White House support as well. Um, and can you tell me about the conversations you've had with Ruble's office on this? Uh, it's been more just giving them background about what the bill does. You know, I think that uh, one of the things I've learned anyway, uh, Charlie's probably old hat at this, but uh, for me, you know, we get uh, literally 300 emails a day, not constituent emails, but sign on to this bill, sign on to this letter, 1,500 a week. So I think we were just kind of uh, getting to out, reaching out to Reed because I work with him through problem solvers um, and giving him some of the background. They reached out trying to get some more of the information about it. We've also talked to a number of Republican offices as well, Richard Hanna from New York and other folks, but um, in Wisconsin specifically, I know uh, we've had.